Good morning from Phuket. We're staying in the old town of Phuket. Very different to the beach places. So today, I think we're gonna have a little walk around the old town. I haven't been out in the old town yet. See what's here, get some food, and just start to soak up the atmosphere of Phuket. So first things first, I'm starving. Let's go find breakfast. We're at the breakfast stop and it's called Boon Rat Dim Sum. And I have been craving dim sum since I left Bangkok when I had it for the first time with Gary. So I've come for dim sum, but it's nine o'clock, which, well, it's a little late, but it is absolutely rammed. But this place shuts at 10.30, so you need to come fairly early anyway. But there's not even a table in there. I mean, it's, it's cramped. So filming is gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm sure we'll do all right. Uh, but I'll wait for a space, show you a little bit of what there is. I'm not an expert on dim sum, to be honest, so I'm not gonna be able to tell you too much about it. I just really want to eat it. And I may as well share it with you, and I'll tell you if it's good. Ooh, someone needs some oil on their brakes. So I'll eat it, and I'll tell you if it's good, and whether you should come to Bun Rat Dim Sum, right in the center of the old town of Phuket. I said it was busy. It's absolutely round. There is nowhere to sit, so we'll wait. But you can see all of the dim sum here. And the steamed dumpling here. Looks amazing. One of these, cab. Cab. Uh, one, cab. Chai cab. Ah, we'll try one of these. Chai cab. And what is this? Did it pop any crap? Oh. Uh, but in people in Korea. Okay, okay. Which is which do you recommend? Uh if I recommend it with local cocktail. Okay, let's try it. Okay, cab. Uh one of these cab. And can we get one cab? Uh did it follow? I can try cab, try, try. Okay, cab. Is there anything I don't have that you recommend? Uh, can you eat spicy? Chai. Okay. Okay, cap. Perfect. Popcorn cap. All right, guys, to be honest, I'll give you a guided tour of the food. I didn't really know what I was ordering. I was just pointing out what looked good. So, <laughs> so normally I know what I'm doing. And I can give you some information and tell you a little bit about it. But I think we're in this together. So I'll show you around and then we'll, uh, we'll work it out as we taste. I'm not gonna know the names. So if you know the names for any of these dishes, put it in the comments. It'd be quite helpful. I'm a dim sum amateur and I'm feeling it. And everyone's watching me filming, but it's okay. It looks good. This looks like crab, crab dumpling. This, he said, was spicy. Spicy fish, so fish and chili, it looks like. That looks really good. Some rice noodle rolls, I guess, with pork inside, it looks like. Yeah. A little bit of pork inside there, that looks very good. This green one looks like there's crab and pork, which looks tasty too. You can see nice chunks of crab in there. This one is interesting. I've not seen anything like this. It's a meatball with a quail egg inside, which is interesting. This is a... <laughs> this is such an amateur way of describing. I'm so sorry, guys. This is a battered sausage, battered pork sausage. This is taro with crispy garlic and onions on top. That one looks very nice. And then finally, we have the shrimp dumplings. And I ordered a Thai tea to go with it. All right, let's get tasting. Uh, use a little bit of the black vinegar. There's a few sides here, or a few sauces. Little bit of black vinegar, so pour a little of that in. <laughs> Someone's having a sneezing fit behind. And then some of this chili sauce. Told me he's a little bit spicy. He's quite worried about the spice for me. Okay. So we're set. Where should we start? I think I'm gonna start with the crispy pork sausage because it looks so good. Jesus, this person cannot stop sneezing. Anyway, I think we'll try it dipped in that chili sauce. Mm. 
crunchy because of the batter on the outside, but then soft, juicy, and porky in the middle. As you bite into it, the juices just run into your mouth. There's onion in there. It's very, it's actually a very coarse sausage. There's not chunks of meat in there, but it's not a smooth paste, which gives it a nice texture, actually. Mm. Delicious. Where should we go next? What about these pork rolls? We'll stick with the pork. We need to put a little bit of crispy fried onion. Or is it garlic? Garlic on top. And this one, I'm gonna dip in the black vinegar. That is great. Soft and delicate with the rice dumpling coating. But it's actually quite thick. It's quite, you know, it's been rolled around three or four times. So you can, uh, you can see how thick that is. So there is a texture in your mouth of that, but it's soft. Then you get the juicy pork, which is rich and fatty. And that black vinegar has such a unique, amazing flavor, cut straight through it. I mean, it's, it's vinegar, it's acidic, but there's a, there's a sweetness to it. Mm. That one is great. Now, okay. I thought these were shrimp, but it's pork and shrimp, these little dumplings. So again, I'm gonna go in the black vinegar and try one of them. Oh, that is good. Wow, and the wrapper, the dumpling wrapper is super thin. I mean, you can almost see through it. Apologies for hands, actually. You can almost see through it, it's translucent. It's so thin like a window onto the dumpling filling inside. Mm. That's better than the roll. Okay, moving through these at rapid pace. Crab and pork, I believe. A green wrapper, so you can see the crab on top. Oh man, you can see how much meat has been stuffed into that. But, you get the flavor of crab, but in the pork, they've also added shrimp. So you get that seafood flavor coming through. That's a cracker as well. I'm liking this place. A little birdie told me that Thai-style dim sum is usually not that great. But damn, this is, is light, it's delicate. There's good flavors in there, strong flavors in there, and it makes you want to keep eating more. Okay. Taro, like a taro cake with green onions and the taro's in the middle. So it's like a, a rice stodgy dumpling batter on the outside with bits of taro. Ah, cow. She says I should dip it in the chili sauce. See, now I'm getting tips on how to eat. Perfect. Mm. For how stodgy and wobbly this one looks, you can just see, it's very light. There's not, a there's not a huge amount of flavor which comes from it, to be honest. It's very, delicate's the right word. I'm not saying it has no flavor. The crispy garlic on top, the spring onions, or chive actually, and then the chili sauce. It, it carries the flavor of everything around it very well. Not my favorite, but very good. All right. Pork and shrimp dumpling. I'm gonna mix it up and go with chili sauce this time. I think that is standard dim sum in my head. When I think of dim sum, I think of that, pork and shrimp. But again, the wrapper is so delicate, so thin, allows you, I mean, it allows the filling to talk, not just the wrapper. Little bit of that Thai tea. I asked for it not very sweet, and it's not very sweet, so that works for me. Okay, actually, I was gonna have the quail egg, but I want to leave that one until last. I'm gonna try this very interesting looking one. The fish, coriander, and the chili. Mm. Oh man, that one is good. The fish is cooked very nicely. Maybe even steamed. And then the chili is sweet and it's sour. There's lamb juice in there, there's fish sauce in there. There is a bit of a kick. 
That one might be one of the best. Okay, we are rattling through this taste test of the last one. Meatball with an egg in the middle. Batter it with breadcrumbs, deep fry it, and we've got a Scotch egg in England. And the, the egg inside, you see, little hard boiled egg. Quail egg, must be, being that small. Mm, nice. The yolk adds a richness, a creaminess. And actually, just with a little bit of black vinegar to cut through it, that one is great. Okay, guys, that's everything tasted. I'm gonna finish it, and then we'll pick up outside. I'll tell you how much it cost, of course. And we'll have a little walk around the old town of Phuket. 192 baht for all of that, including the tea, and you get some Chinese tea on the side for free as well. Great value, super delicious. If you want a great stop for breakfast to set your day up when you're exploring around the old town, Bun Rat Dim Sum. Right. Let's go walk around. I should just say, actually, which I didn't before the food, <laughs> well planned, that if you want good food in Phuket, the old town of Phuket is the place to come. Yeah, I mean, you cannot get better in Phuket than the food in Phuket Old Town. So yes, if you want the beaches and you want the nightlife, and you want the party or the relaxation or the massages, whatever you want, yeah, sure, the beaches. But if you want good food, you need to come to Phuket Old Town. And that's why I base myself here, because I have a scooter, I can get out. But I want to be based close to the food. That's what, that's what gives me the buzz about travel and visiting new places, the food, the culture, the people. And uh, I think Phuket Town is the place for that. And to be honest, there are a lot of people who don't even come to Phuket Old Town. They just stay by the beaches. Now, you don't have to just come here for food. Walking around now, I've walked around a little bit before turning the camera on now. It is gorgeous, and it, it, I said it has such a nice vibe and such a nice atmosphere. It's full of bars and cafes and food shops and colorful buildings and pretty temples, and uh, the list goes on, and it has that rustic charm. It looks, well, some things look very clean and colorful, and some things look a little bit run down, but in a good way, that, like, dirty wash on a building, which I think looks really cool. It's giving me some vibes, if you've been to Georgetown in Penang in Malaysia, it looks a little bit like that, actually. It has that cool feel to it. And I, I, I don't really know how to describe it other than saying cool, because it is. So I'm walking around thinking, how cool is this place? It's a very eclectic mix of culture and influence here. And there's a good reason for that, because historically, Phuket Old Town and Phuket in general, but Phuket Old Town specifically was where people came to trade and deal with tin mining. Well, Phuket was very big for tin mining and the traders came to Phuket Old Town to do the deals from all over. So you see those influences in the architecture. You have European architecture, you have Chinese architecture, you of course have architecture of the region, but it's all in this small town which makes for a very interesting place to walk around. And now, in the modern time, you've got the bars, you've got the cafes, you've got the, the, the cool restaurants, the boutique places, the nice hotels. Yeah, I like it, I like it a lot. Now, here we go. Get the, get the Instagram pose. <laughs> I guarantee there are people who stand here for a long time taking the perfect shot. Maybe if we are around later, we'll see some more, but you can see why. I mean, come on, it's stunning. As I say, smart marketing. Oh, here's that, that piece of street art. Here we have, we have some people down here taking, taking their photos. But yeah, just a relaxed video today. I'm kind of getting into the... I'm liking these relaxed videos where I can just pick up a camera, have a walk, have a little talk. It feels like a live stream. Well, I'm talking now like it's a live stream. But it's easier for me. And uh, I think what I learned in the first journey is manage your energy. Because I burnt out in the first journey when I was riding around the north. And I went into a, a difficult place, let's say. And I wasn't enjoying it as much at times. And I was around amazing, amazing landscape and nature. And I just wasn't really, well, there were times where I wasn't really feeling it. So I'm trying to manage it. So make, yes, make some of those higher quality videos, but then also make somebody's like, walk-around videos. How cool is this place? 
I don't even know what it is. Maybe it's a cat. Oh, yeah, it's a bar. So this is a good example of how cool some of the bars are. Like, uh, well, it's almost like a fantasy, like a dream. It's like something I see in my dreams with uh, things made out of driftwood and things I guess they found on the beach. Look how cool this is. Got Mr. Fox, dream catchers, made from feathers, some old bikes. Yeah, very cool. That's why I love, one of the first things I do when I get to a new place is just come out for a walk. I just happen to be bringing you guys with me this time. I think I might have found my favorite building in the old town. How cool is that color? Look at that. After a little walk, it's coffee time. I've just found this cafe called Fifth Element, and it's a soft opening. So why don't we give them a try, see what they're like. Oh, and they're a roaster as well. Already a good start. Sweaty cab. Had to come outside because they're playing music, copyright music, although you can kind of hear it here, so I'm going to move away even further. I actually changed my order. Mr. Indecisive ordered a dirty coffee, and you can see it does look very dirty. I mean, it's very thick, rich milk and cream. Actually, I think it's more cream than rich milk, but... Uh, put into the cup and then the coffee dumped over the top, essentially, and it gives this dirty colour. It's nothing to do with it being filthy, but it is delicious. And normally when I want to try how good a coffee place is, I'll have an Americano, because then you literally just taste the coffee and you see how good it is. But since I drank these for the first time, the dirty coffee, kind of, yeah, kind of growing on me. It's got a very unique flavour and every now and then I treat myself to another. 95 baht, the place is new, just opened. Very nice inside, very nice decoration with it, like dark and yellow, which I like. They roast their own coffee. The coffee is from Thailand. The staff speak English. Yeah, very nice, can't complain, but there's no point coming to the coffee shop if a coffee isn't that good, so. Mm. That's what, every time I drink this, it blows my mind because it literally tastes like buttered toast. And I've said this before, and I thought it was just the one I had, but every dirty coffee I've had tastes like buttered toast. Some more rich than others and some too rich. I think that's how you know how good they are. Like if they're too rich and you don't want more, then it's not the best dirty coffee. But one like this, is luscious. I can't use any other word. It's luscious, and it makes you want to keep drinking more. Mm. Very, very good. Dirty coffee. Very nice cafe. Just opened the Fifth Element in Old Town Phuket. If you're walking around, stop by, but there's loads of nice coffee places here. Don't really think you can go wrong. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my coffee.